Good day, everybody. We are going to be going over question number three from the 2018 Calc BC test. What we have is a graph. And we have, these are very similar to the ones we've been working on. Okay, A graph, this is the graph of G, is continuous, and it's a piecewise graph. There's a bunch of straight lines, and all of a sudden here, from three to six, it's this parabola. Two times x minus four squared. With that in mind, let's answer some questions. Okay. So if f of 1 equals 3, what is f of negative 5? Now remember, f of negative 5, g is the derivative of f. So g actually equals f prime. Okay. So if I want to get f from f prime, I have to look at the integral. So we're given the starting value of 1. So we're starting from 1 and we're going back to negative 5. And we're looking at g in this case. And we know at 1 we have the value of 3. So we have the value of 3 and now we're going to add or subtract depending on what we are going to calculate. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to reverse the limits of integration and then make it negative. So we are looking at the area between negative 5 and 1. All right, so let's take a look at that area. So the area between negative 5 and negative 2 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And this is 1 and a half. So we have 10 and a half up until there. But it's below the axis, so it's negative. There's no area at all between negative 1 and 0. And there's an area of 1 that is after, uh, between 0 and 1. All right, so a little calculations. Well, I've got to put my equal sign there. Okay. So negative 10.5 plus 1 is negative 9.5. The opposite of that. Add them together and we get 12 and a half. So f of negative 5 equals 12 and a half. All right. Evaluate this. Seems rather simple, doesn't it? The only thing you got to be careful of, we have to break it up at 3. Because at 3, we lose our straight lines and we have a function. And what is g, the function between 3 and 6? Well, it is this right here. All right, so I know the area between 1 and 3 is 4. That's nice. Well, now we got to calculate this. So the antiderivative of this function would be, raise it by, raise it by 1, come 3, so 2 thirds, x minus 4 to the third power. Calculating that from 6 to 3. All right, so a little calculation. Let's put the 6 in. 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. Subtract the 3. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. So we have negative 2 thirds. Well, isn't that nice? Because that becomes 18 thirds, which we also know as 6. So this equals 10. All right. Part C. Where is, gra uh, I'm sorry, where is F, the graph of F, increasing and concave up? So remember, what we're looking at is the derivative of F. So how do you know if something is increasing? Well, f increases when its derivative is positive. Okay. Well, in this case, our derivative is g. So where is g positive? Well, g is positive here, 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 and after 4. Okay. It's 0, negative, negative. So that's out of the question. Secondly, 
concave up. Well, we know that F is concave up when its second derivative would be positive. And remember, in this case, the second derivative of F is the first derivative of G. So now we're looking at the slopes of G. Where do the slopes have a positive value? Okay, well, let's look at it. Slopes are positive here, and slopes are positive here. So what intervals are they both true? So F is increasing and concave up. on the intervals from 0 to 1 and 4 to 6. And our reasoning, our justification is right here. Okay? I made that 6 a little nicer. Don't like it. There we go. All right. One more problem. Now, see the pace we're working at? In the old AP formats, you would have to have a, you would probably use about 15 minutes per free response question. So, on a new format, I don't know what it's going to be like, but if you can time yourself that way, you're probably at a very good pace. All right, now we want points of inflection. So, points of inflection deal with the second derivative. And remember, the second derivative of f is the same as the first derivative of g. And we're looking for values where either this equals zero or does not exist. That would be potential points of inflection. So what are our candidates? Our candidates for g prime. So where is this slope equal to zero? Now the slope equals zero all the way from negative five to negative two. So there's nothing we can really do. There's no points of inflection. There's just nothing there. So what I'm looking for is either where it doesn't exist or where it equals zero at one point. So I know it's going to be a little bit like overkill. I don't probably need to try this many points because these flat lines, you might consider everything between one and three is, is irrelevant. One and three will not be potential answers, and you will see why, and neither will a negative one and zero. Okay, And it hits zero at four. Anyhow, those are potential candidates and you're going to see why most of these will be eliminated. But I like to do it this way just so I can visually see why this is true. So anything before negative two, remember we're looking at the second derivative, which is the same as g prime, the slopes. So everything before negative two has a slope of zero. Everything between negative two and negative one has a positive slope. Everything between negative 1 and 0 has a slope of 0. Anything between 0 and 1 has a positive slope. Anything between 1 and 3, 0. Okay, between 3 and 4, it's going down, so it's a negative slope. And after 4, it's positive. So we're looking for complete sign changes from positive to negative, And there's only one value where that's going to happen. It's going to happen at 4. So, f prime of 4 is a point of inflection and now the justification, the reason, because the table's not enough, because f double prime of x changes from negative to positive at 4. And there's your justification. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's how you do this question. So continue good luck in your practice, and I will talk to you later.